Hey, I'm Kylie of Kylie M Interiors, online paint color expert. Today we're taking a look at Sherwin-Williams Agreeable Gray. Now given its name, you might assume that Agreeable Gray is a gray paint color. And while it certainly nods at gray, it's not as cool as grays because it has a warm undertone. Agreeable Gray is actually a grayish. What makes a color a grayish is that it will have a bit of green in it. This is either super subtle, like so far in its backdrop that you don't see it, or it's more obvious. As it relates to agreeable gray, it is so subtle, you shouldn't expect it to show up to the party. If it does, it's super subtle. The problem is that if you have finishes, like a lot of the homes built in 2010 to 2020 have a lot of gray finishes and people are trying to warm up their spaces a bit, get away from those gray on the, that gray on their walls, agreeable gray can be a great solution. I'd say 50% of the time it works. The other 50% of the time, it doesn't have enough of a violet undertone because those finishes in the 2010 homes, a lot of violet in them, especially like 2015 for reals. So agreeable gray, it's 50-50. If it works, it's pure magic. If not, I do have a solution that we're gonna look at shortly. So long story short, undertones, super subtle. Don't expect it to show up, sample carefully. Now, LRV. LRV is light reflectance value. It tells you how light a, a paint color is on a scale of zero to 100. Agreeable gray sits at 60. So at 60, I call this like my happy range between 60 and 70. This range of LRV tends to suit the average room, the average homeowner. So if you don't know what type of color to look at, find colors with this LRV. And I have a great blog post on it. So if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, read the blog post and it'll be like, now, let's say you start with agreeable gray. It has an LRV of 60. You'll have some white nearby when you're sampling because you want to really see the contrast. You might go, oh, that's the perfect depth. I love it. Awesome. You might go, oh, I actually wanted something a little bit darker. Well, then you want to find a paint color with a lower LRV. You might look at it and go, oh, that's a little bit heavier, a little bit more drab than I wanted. You want a color with a higher LRV. Now, how agreeable gray looks can vary depending on your interior lighting. Um, the surrounding finishes, but your exposure actually plays a pretty big part in things. Let's say you have a north facing room. North facing rooms are naturally gray and they can kind of have a bit of a blue tinge to them sometimes. The nice thing about agreeable gray is that it still holds some passive warmth. It will definitely lean that little bit grayer in this light, but it doesn't go icy cold like some of the cooler, more traditional grays do. If you have east or west facing light, those are tough because you know, east is bright in the morning, flat and drab in the afternoon. West is flat and drab in the morning, bright in the afternoon and quite warm as the day progresses. So at that point, well, and with any exposure, it comes down to how much natural light you have. If you have a dark room or one that's not really adequately lit from exterior or interior lighting, agreeable gray is gonna look a little like drab. It's not gonna be awesome, a little dingy. If you don't have enough exterior light, amp up your interior light. This kind of color, you know, you hit it with like 3000 Kelvins. So pretty. Uh, south facing light, so south facing light or afternoon western sunshine. So lovely, so warm. And a lot of us want to balance that out, but we don't really want a cool paint color necessarily. Agreeable Gray does a great job for that because it adds a slightly cooler edge without dipping you into the cool tones. Now, when you're looking at a paint color, you never want to pick a paint color based on itself. You need to compare. You might look at one color and be like, that's it, I love it. And then you compare it to another and go, oh, I didn't realize that last one had green, purple, blue undertones, or it was actually darker than I wanted. Compare, compare, compare. Now I use Sample Ice Peel and Stick because they're made with each brand's actual paint, so they're better than the paint store chips, and they're more affordable than your messy sample pots and they deliver to your door the next day. So no brainer for me. Now, first comparable. Oh, by the way, my next video on Agreeable Gray is going to be colors that look good with Agreeable Gray, as well as a few countertops and fun stuff. This is just about looking at other options to explore that are similar to, a little bit different than Agreeable Gray. Sherwin-Williams Worldly Gray. So as you can see here, Worldly Gray, a little bit more depth. So I'd say maybe, I could be wrong, maybe it's like 58 or something in its LRV. It's also, it has a little bit more of a muddy look and of the two is a bit more likely to grab that little flash of green. When I do my online color consulting, I never recommend Worldly Gray. Or if I do, it's like 
one in a hundred times. So if you're looking at these two, agreeable gray is probably the better color for your home. It tends to work more often. Now, sometimes people are like, oh, I want a lighter version. According to Sharon Williams, the off-white version of this is incredible white. Don't do it. Uh, incredible white can be very pretty. If you like a purple and pink undertones, this is going to be your jam, right? So that's the deceiving part is you look on these strips and you say, oh, there's the off-white, there's the dark. They all relate. They all look good. They don't always look good. And case in point, <laughs> incredible white, that's a hard no on that. Again, you might look at this all on its own and be like, oh, that's pretty, I love it. All of a sudden you put it with white, you go, oh my goodness, there's some pink in there. Sherwin-Williams hair and plume. Let's see, sometimes I just grab these without thinking. I just kind of like go, oh, it catches me. Um, that's a little bit better version of an off-white, even though it's still pretty pink for agreeable gray. Agreeable gray is a tough one. Actually, I'm gonna grab, where is a new gray? A new, a new, there we go. So right now, agreeable gray is pretty hot for cabinets. The thing is, as a cabinet color, this depth is really tough. It makes it tricky to pick a wall color if you don't like white. Um, in which case, sometimes I say, well, let's bump things down a bit, in which case we look at a new gray. It really picks up what agreeable gray is throwing down. It just adds more depth, gives you more versatility for wall colors. Now, if you're not painting your cabinets and you're looking for your walls, of the two, Agreeable Gray is way more popular, again, because of its LRV. I don't know what this guy's at. I could make it up and say like 53, I don't know. But generally, for the average room, this is too dark unless you want to add some visual weight. If your room is super bright, blown up with light, Agreeable Gray will wash out. You might really like a new gray. Am I talking too much? I know, I talk a lot. I get very excited about this stuff. Sherwin-Williams City Loft. Again, another off-white that's gorgeous, I love it. The thing is, if Agreeable Gray had a little bit of a violet undertone, it would love these. So this is showing you how sneaky that green is, how it stops Agreeable Gray from going violet without being green. So there you go, case in point. Ah, Benjamin Moore Collingwood. So you look at Agreeable Gray, you love the general look of it, but you're like, I think it looks a little green in my room, or it's not quite grabbing the violet undertone I need it to. Enter Collingwood. Do you see it? Seriously. So there's Collingwood. Do you see that little tiny bit of like almost muddy green in comparison? I hope you do, because this is really exciting to me. So Benjamin Moore Collingwood tweaks that. Now, and again, I have, I have blog posts on all of these, on Kylie Emin chairs. I have videos and I'm updating all my videos so they're even more awesome. Uh, so look at the difference. There's City Loft with agreeable gray. It's like, wah, wah. We put it with Collingwood. Oh, like everything's happy, right? So undertones, undertones, undertones. And the only way you can know is to compare. And what you think suits your home, your home might disagree with you. Sherwin-Williams Egret White. Again, passable. If you were putting these in rooms adjoining each other, great. Like, you know, bedroom, bathroom, no problem. But, you know, cabinet, wall or wall cabinet, nope. Agreeable gray is a tough cabinet color. Beautiful wall color. Accessible beige. When I do my online consulting, in the questionnaire, I ask all these questions. So one of them is like, are there any colors you're eyeing up? A lot of times they say agreeable gray, accessible beige, repose gray, all these colors. Now, if your home suits agreeable gray, probably doesn't suit accessible beige. If it suits this, it doesn't suit that. They're doing different things. Um, the funny thing is they both harbor a tiny, tiny nugget of green in them, which is really cool, but accessible beige, we're in a totally different ballpark there and they're hardly comparable. Benjamin Moore, ooh, let's do, I don't wanna do that one. Let's do Benjamin Moore Revere Pewter. Now let's say you heard agreeable gray might be earthy, warm, muddy, a little bit of a green undertone. You look at it and go, Oh, I'm kind of underwhelmed. I was looking for more. Well, you could look at Sherwin-Williams Amazing Gray, which is amazing. Or you can look at Benjamin Moore Revere Pewter, which a little bit darker, a little bit more muddy, and of the two is a little bit more inclined to grab green. Again, all these colors, they can and will change with exposures, lighting, all that stuff. This is just a place to start your sampling. You could check out the video on Revere Pewter and see more green options on that. So. And if they're not there, I'm doing a new video soon. Hang tight. 
Now we're gonna look at white trim colors so we can see which whites look best if you're looking for your cabinets, trim, ceilings, doors. Now this fella here, I have to get these cut down, but it's on my to-do list. White Dove, Benjamin Moore White Dove, looks gorgeous with agreeable gray. Personally, this is about as warm as I'd like to go. Let's look at Sherwin-Williams Alabaster. Where are you? Okay. So a lot of people like to partner Agreeable Gray with Alabaster. It's doable. It's just, if I could start from scratch, paint a room or a whole home from scratch, would I put Agreeable Gray and Alabaster together? No, there's better options. So I would say it's doable, but if you really want doable, you kind of want awesome. Um, yeah, it's okay. You can tell I'm super excited about it. Let's look at the difference here. Sometimes it's comparing. Again, never just pick a color based on itself. So here's the difference. Alabaster, a little bit more of an almost, I'll say slightly dingy yellow, even though it's really pretty on cabinets. Uh, White Dove, a little bit brighter. White Dove's a way better choice. If you have Alabaster trim and you really wanna use Agreeable Gray, maybe dark and Agreeable Gray by 25%, put a little more meat on its bones and it will like Alabaster that a little bit more. Now you get to go away and we get to look at not you, I don't want you to go away. <laughs> Talking to my trims. Benjamin Moore Simply White. This is a brighter white with a bit of yellow. That looks great with Agreeable Gray. I have no problem with that. However, if I were choosing and starting from scratch, I would probably choose Benjamin Moore Chantilly Lace. It's a brighter white. There's your difference. See that shift? A little bit more yellow here. A little bit brighter. Chantilly Lace is actually a slightly soft white, but you'd hardly know it. I like it with Agreeable Gray, but we're gonna look at my numero uno choice. Dun, 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 dun. Sherwin-Williams Pure White. Oh, so pretty, eh? I love it. Um, it's the perfect contrast. Pure White has that super subdued, calm warmth. Again, I have videos on all these. I have blog posts if you wanna see photos of them. But if I'm starting from scratch and I have a choice, 100% pure white. Pure white, then I'm going probably, ooh, Chantilly Lace or White Dove, Simply White. Alabaster is one of my last choices, but let me show you my very last choice because some of you might be here because of it. Oh, there's another one, Sherwin-Williams Extra White. It's banging with Agreeable Gray, I love it. Yeah, so some of you have cream trim or cream cabinets. You're like, oh, please, can I put Agreeable Gray on my walls? It's the hardest dough I could ever give you, right? I mean, if you look at that and you're like, you know what, I'm okay with it. That's cool beans with me. But personally, it's, it's not a great combo. I, I think I have a really long video on cream cabinets and trim. I know I have several blog posts. If you go into my search, I have blog posts dealing with cream trim. Long story short, I would not do agreeable gray with antique white trim, uh, Sherwin-Williams Creamy, Benjamin Moore Navajo White. I wouldn't do it. Now, I think that's all I've got for you today. Next video is going to be all about coordinating with Agreeable Gray and it's gonna be fun. So please consider subscribing.